Howdy, my name is Oatmeal Lint, and this is our Let's Play of EU4 as Conneth. As you can see, we have quite a large empire here, and it's soon to be larger as we're going to take over Iroquois Holdings, because the British are our next um, old world target. Right here, you can see that the, that the Norwegians, I mean that the uh, Danish, have a claim um, well, they have core here in a British territory, which means that if we were to call them into our war, they would say yes. Um, I saw, I strongly suspect that the French also have a claim over here, right? They do. So if we ally with France, which we can do in October, wait, no, we won't be able to do for five years. Um, well... We can... I mean, they're at war right now, so Denmark will go to war with them. And hopefully that holds. Because as soon as we recover some manpower, we're gonna go and take them down. Um, I looked into it, and the only way that I can become a republic is to found Ireland. I definitely want to do that, but I have a few uh, things holding me back. Um, as you can see, I have a gigantic income, just this huge income, even with that huge army maintenance, just huge, because I have, like, all mercenaries. Um, and even some mercenary cavalry. <laughs> Here, we're gonna go and land these troops, um... Well, I, I guess we're gonna we're gonna land them. We're gonna land them over here. They should they should stop it. They should stop attritioning as soon as they're in friendly waters. Yeah, they did. We're we're gonna land them up here in preparation for our Iroquois war. And this will be what we go at them with. Are these troops? Not a lot of troops there. Not so many troops there. At least we just don't have very many troops. Our manpower is pretty terrible. Um, and there's not a lot we can do about it. We need manpower recovery rate. So as far as changing, <coughs> as far as changing, we would, we would want to change to this constitutional monarchy, which would give us manpower recovery rate, but we don't have anywhere near the text needed for that. Um, this looks good. Oh, a lot more money, but what are we going to do with money? Right now, the manpower modifier is actually better than money. This is obviously... Well, it's not obviously. It's relatively useless. They're not giving us a lot of money. Um, but what to do about this manpower recovery? There are other idea groups. We would definitely be going into a, in a military um, idea group. That would, that would give us more manpower, and this would give us the um, manpower recovery speed. And that, that's kind of where we need to go um, as soon as possible. And in order to get the next one, it's unlocked at 17. We're nowhere near that. I'm kind of regretting getting this economic idea, so it would be so much better to get that. Uh, if, I do, if, if, if you guys ever do this again, if you, someone does this New World thing, realize that you run out of manpower, then you really want to get quantity ideas. I didn't realize how important this would be until I got low on manpower and was thinking, oh, Okay, <laughs> I have nothing, I mean, my manpower recovers at a rate of 388 each month. That is nothing. I, I need more army tradition in order to get more of that, and... As you can see, it's just it's just not happening. Um, I can build more manpower pretty easily by building these. Where are they at? These training fields, but that's just again that's just flat manpower. I have plenty of manpower, flat manpower. I've got, you know, quite a bit. If you look in the ledger, and you go country, and you do maximum manpower, 
I'm actually not not super high up there, am I? Hmm. I figured I would be a bit higher than this. Um, I guess I should build those buildings then. Wow, do I have inflation? What's what's affecting my build cost? Why is my build cost so high? Cause I, I should have build cost decreaser by twenty percent. Oh, that that just might be the cost of the training field. Um, and you can see I've built a lot of them already, all over the place. Uh, oh right, armory before training field. I see, armory is cheaper. I see, and I would definitely want the armory. Okay. So let's see, where are the biggest numbers? We have a plus 30, we have, yeah, this is a big one. Where else do we have large numbers? Well, it looks like everywhere else is like 38 plus 30 is good, 36 plus 30 is, 37 plus 30 is good, 60, 68 plus 30 is better. 70. No. So yeah, we're we're getting I mean I guess those are the base. Never mind. All it's the plus 30 is the um Yeah. Plus 30 is just what I'm getting. So that didn't all of them would have been equivalent. I don't know how to get huge manpower numbers. Um I have a lot of lot of land. It's just uh let me check this out, like Yeah, bonuses is giving them a big one. They have a manpower efficiency modifier. I get 32 here. That's not very much. Um, and I have a manpower modifier, but look at Austria's province. They're getting 700 per province. Um, and they've built a training field, barracks, armory. Oh, well, here's a bit more of a realistic one. I think that that was just one of their big ones, but yeah, they, they do have really big numbers in some of these provinces due to um, this manpower efficiency number. And I, I should have been focusing on this more this game, that, that should have been a concern, and it, and it just wasn't, I just, I just wasn't dealing with it properly. So now I'm stuck. Uh, I'm stuck with all these mercenaries, which I think I'm just going to get rid of so that I can build more manpower modifiers. Yeah, definitely. Um, you see I'm paying 7.6 in harbor fees? That's quite a bit. Um, and as much as I really do want... Would you want fleet basing over here? It's it's not worth it. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and cancel fleet basing. I got that to save my fleet. And as soon as that guy gets back, I will send him over here to improve with Denmark. Denmark is very important to remain an ally because they will go to this my next aggressive war, and it's so rare to find an ally who will go to an aggressive war for you. Okay, let's get let's get up on the Iroquois. I guess our next. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and recall from here. I have enough relationship with France. Oh, good. So we now have two. It would be nice to have the third uh, third diplomat from from being public controller. These guys were... So I ended up in this weird situation before where uh, there's just too many there. Even if I consolidate, there's too many. You see they're all mercs, all mercenaries. Uh, not 100% sure I control any non-mercenaries.
Gotta put these on this boat. These are non-mercenaries. This entire stack is non-mercenaries. I'm also gonna consolidate them. So I want to pick this up as soon as possible because I need a stronger fleet and the best way for me to get, I mean this will increase my naval maintenance, but the best way for me to get a stronger fleet is actually to start building the uh, galleons. They are very strong. Now they'll cost, they'll cost a pretty penny. And I have plenty of naval force limit. I mean, my fleet is quite strong. I don't need to worry about that so much. Although I do need to send my light ships back to, uh... Back to the trade zones that they're supposed to be in. So I need one for the Chesapeake. I I'm not going to fight for the Chesapeake. I just want to keep it. And then, once they get here... Once they get here, I'll, I'll split them up according to where which nodes need them. So, Portugal isn't fighting as hard for this node. I built a bunch of buildings to help in this node. So that node doesn't need quite as much. Spain is fighting pretty strong in this node. So... I'm gonna go ahead and put, like... Out of this 22, probably 11 here. Oh, wow, that's right. I'm such a dunce. Iroquois are not next. That would piss off the Shawnee, and I wanna I wanna annex them eventually. Um okay, so here I actually just bought my diplomatic tech, I'm out of diplomatic points, and I don't want to increase the cost of ships because I know that I'm about to build a big navy. So yeah, I'm gonna have... I'm gonna buy, probably buy a military tech t soon, but very soon. So this will be the best pick. I'm not... yeah, I'm not fighting the, uh... I'm fighting the... the Inca. That's right. And while they're in the water, I'll just leave these two up here. I don't know, protect there. These aren't actually two. Oh, it is, because I consolidated. Um, while they're in the water is a good time for me to do this, and then make them the stronger troop type. Because then they'll, they'll increase... Yeah. In the water, and not like at war. So the closest I can get them is probably Antigua. So um, I should send them to Antigua. Yeah, the reason I'm going after these guys is twofold. One, it shouldn't piss off my vassal very much. They may not even have met. Let's see. A, B, C, D, Inca. They have met the Inca, but they're also much further away than they are from the Iroquois. So that, that should probably not give me the aggressive expansion as much. I don't think I should have... I'm not sure if I should have annexed... I don't think I should have vassaled them. I don't know. It'll definitely be worth it if I can ever annex them. If I can't, then it looks kind of stupid. Okay, so my diplomats are kind of free, which is good. I'm going to go and improve with Denmark. Is I really do, uh, really do want to stay allies with them, and then this diplomat will be earmarked for the war. Yeah, I just, I just don't see this as being. I just, this was a really bad idea to invest in this. I should definitely have done a military one, but I didn't, and now I'm paying the price. Saving up for another. Yeah, I'd want to fight with Austria, is who I'd want to fight with. Great Britain is in danger of becoming the controller, but they're fighting with Spain for, looks like, both of these. Uh, who's the youngest guy? Ooh, this Polish guy's very young. Um, I will be fighting for him instead. I know, every time I, every time I say it, I decide in the end, attack Portugal, just straight up attack them. So, 
Here, let's let's show you why I'm not doing this. Um, Petin. You see that this costs 125 to do, and what will it do? It'll increase tax by 33%. It will increase manpower by 33%. Oh, I have such bad manpower efficiency. Why is this? the war exhaustion. Um, I'm actually going to spend some diplomatic power to do that. That should increase my... That should, that should increase my manpower efficiency by a bit. And I'm about to go to war, so it's not like it's going to decrease on its own. Ooh, ivory. That's not bad. Um, not what I wanted. Uh, the only thing I actually want over here is gold. But these are my, like, actual colonies. Um, I should build a troop over here as soon as I can. And then I might go and take here. Um, it's not a bad idea. Maybe going over to Asia wouldn't be the worst. But I do still have colonies over here that, you know, they, they suck. Um, all the remaining colonies over here suck. But there might be something good up here that I just haven't seen, sort of in Alaska, that could make gold. I know that Alaska currently produces gold, so it's possible that it produces gold in this world, too. Okay, it's time to go to war. This is going to take a lot of our administrative power, but that's fine. We need these la we need these lands in order to put colonies down here profitably. Wonder if one guy will actually fight off the entire stack. What am I? Who am I kidding? Yes, of course it will. Yes, the diplomat's back, I just can't really afford to send him to Europe. This war is going to be so fast. I saw several people commenting, you know, poor Native Americans on the videos. Yeah. <laughs> um, I am not particularly tempted at this time. No. At this time to uh, play as a Native American, they would have to change it so that I understand that they want it to be sort of realistic, so when you play against them, it's very easy. I, I get that. But they need to change it so that when... Oh, Ivory again? Well, I'm not going to complain too much. They have to change it so that when you play as them, like when the when the Native Americans are, in, are a player character, they have different stats than they do when you play against them. And that would very much alter the balance of the game when you played as a Native American nation because then you'd be able to put up a fight and like the like the whole like the whole world is all about colonialism in this era. If you if you think that it's not, it it really, really is about colonialism. Well both ivory, no gold. I probably won't be taking any of these provinces because I don't have high base taxes. I don't believe, I believe this is like a wasteland here, a Saharan wasteland, so. I just didn't hit gold, that's fine. I was suffering from inflation anyway. Speaking of which, yeah. I believe this is a colony, yeah. That's why he's just standing there sort of twiddling his thumbs. It's, it's actually a colony.
Okay, let's see. I'm just gonna put everything into this Pol Polish guy. As long as Austria is fighting for its cardinals. Great Britain is fighting there. That's not fighting there. Um, this guy's just really young. That's juicy. The game is not gonna be over anytime soon. I wish that it were, but if you check out the ledger and you go... You check out my score, even though I have, well, one and three, Austria has... Oh, Denmark is actually getting the most per month right now. But I think it's going to take a long time to get to rank one. Um, it's not going to require, I could probably crank it up to speed five at some point. It's not going to require a huge amount of tedious combat like world domination will. It'll probably require, like, I won't have to go to war with just random littles, you know, who are spread out over the map for some reason. And that was always my, my problem with like Global Domination in, in Crusader Kings 2, or in this game. It just felt, felt terrible to do. It felt just so boring, and I always just wanted to quit. Oh, we have more Imperial Reform. Oh, Austria is an ally? Um, okay. So we need, we need to check. Allied to rival. So Denmark is a rival of Austria. But Austria doesn't have any claims. Austria is just a really strong ally right now. I'd much rather be allied with Austria than France. Oh, France doesn't even like me anymore. Screw you, France. Um, yeah, we're going to... Actually, if they'll give us a royal marriage... Yeah, we'll take the Royal Marriage first. Royal Marriage is harder to get than Alliance, weirdly enough. <coughs> We're gonna take it while we can. They might even offer an Alliance after I do this. So I won't have to spend the Diplomat time. Great Britain is pretty obviously the target of our next war. And then we're going to have to go to war with France anyway, because they control part of Ireland. That's just... It's a moral prerogative. And what we're going to take from Great Britain... Well, obviously we take back all of Ireland so that we can unite Ireland and become a republic. And because we have to do it... <laughs> there are still Irishmen in Ireland. They haven't been completely exterminated. Um, France is a pretty juicy target. We might go after France. Austria is a pretty juicy target. What we have to do is, once we become a... Once we become a republic, then we probably go ahead and take... Revolution, counter-revolution? It's a pretty good CB if you have a different leadership type, and all of these guys are monarchies. Um, we might do that. We might stick to the plan and go here. But I think the first things first is to become that republic. And that's going to require just crushing Great Britain. But they're actually at war. Huh. They don't. It's not a big war. It's, it's a war against the Livonian Order. They're sure to just smash them, so. You yeah, have pretty strong allies right now. And I, I believe that they'll probably stay allies with me. Okay. Mojave is actually in the US, I know that for sure. It's a it's a desert. Pretty surprised it's producing grain, but I guess there's nothing like what they might produce salt or something. Maybe I don't really know what they produce in the real in the real world. So this is the last of their um, 
So I have one of one leader. Uh, I don't know if I should kick him out or not. I need I need a conquistador. I guess like I guess he's kinda crappy, so I'm gonna go ahead and do no leader. Kick him out. Split the units. I don't want that going down there. And then go ahead and get a conquistador and send him to go explore these territories. Because that's where we're going to be sending most of our colonists. It's not a long distance. Um, it's actually a distance from this. It's going to be a distance from wherever we're contiguous. So it won't be a long distance because we're going to take over all of these provinces. So we have plenty of money now. I think that it's time to do something with that money that doesn't require any points. The best thing I can do that doesn't require any points or manpower is to build a bunch of galleons. It's kind of pricey, but... Oh, I also intended to split this fleet up. Is it suffering from lack of patrols? It is suffering from lack of patrols. So what we have to do... This is probably suffering from lack of patrols too. Yeah, it's suffering from lack of patrols. So we need to build two... Three boats on this side. Three light ships. Okay. Now this is actually going to increase our pa pa Panama control too. I believe that the only people, like this will be the only province not controlled by us in Panama anymore. Yeah, so we really won't need to patrol this as heavily. Panama, that is. So you probably, let's see, this one's patrolling. Mexico, this one's patrolling. Chesapeake Bay, we need one for Panama, it looks like. Wait, this one's patrolling. Chesapeake Bay, oh, okay. Does this have lack of patrols? No? So he's just patrolling all the way up there. Okay. Um, and then we're going to split here and send half of them to the Caribbean and half of them to Mississippi River. Yeah, Mississippi River. We're really only interested in, in, in consolidate. We, we, want, we want to consolidate our our trade, and we're gonna want a guy here. <sighs> I'm not sure if it's better to collect trade from here or there, but let's actually calculate it out. This is one point eight. Well, once we get the Shawnee, it's really obvious that we're going to move our merchant up here and our fleet up here. But right now, it's not at all obvious. I think it's still here. Okay, so that's that's what we're doing with the ships. I'm going to pull out these troops back to here. So that they stop suffering any attrition if they were going to suffer attrition. We still have, we have five colonists. We could easily fund another colonist, but there's a lot to do with our money. Okay. Oh, 38 days, I guess we can. Say something in 38 days. 
We're going to leave them all together because you guys saw, or maybe you saw, last time when you don't have all of your troops together, the, even rebels can be really difficult to beat. So are any of these profitable? Some of them are looking okay. An alliance from Austria. See, I don't have to send my guy over there in, in order to make this alliance. Stupid Portugal taking territory. Um, let's just see that. Okay, they still like us. Austria still really likes us because we embrace the counter reform. Pretty good idea, I think, if it got us this alliance and all those and all those missionaries. So I'm gonna go ahead and accept. I don't really need to fight for this one. It doesn't look like anyone's fighting for it either, really. Okay, I hope that this doesn't piss off Denmark. No, it didn't, they didn't even notice. So, Austria is Denmark's rival, but Denmark hasn't marked Austria as a rival. It's interesting, I, I like to mark back. Um, see, Spain hasn't marked me as a rival, so I'm not marking them as a rival, but Portugal did, so I marked them as a rival, and I'm embargoing them. There's no, there's no one else who really makes any sense as a rival. Maybe Great Britain, but... I mean, they're embargoing me, sure, but where do we actually compete for trade? They're probably embargoing me in the Chesapeake Bay. Yeah, the Chesapeake Bay is just such a cluster. Really hard to fight for that node. I'm gonna try not to fight for that node. Because I'll, I'll have even more in the... I'll have a few more in the Mississippi River. I don't know. I don't know what, which, one's worth, uh, which one's worth fighting for or not. Oh, right, time to make peace with you guys. We want all of your stuff. Who's this piss off? So notice this doesn't piss off my uh, vassal very much at all. Whereas I'm afraid it would piss off the Iroquois, it would piss them off if I went after the Iroquois. Yeah, the Inca really don't like this. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and core every province before I believe I can, yeah, I'm going to core them before I convert them because, as you can see, it's 50% reduction. So this is an, this is an easy screen to do this. Just... I do like how they changed the interface so that now if, it's, if any of your provinces are not cores, you see that, you see that in this screen. So it kind of looks like I could go after the Iroquois too now. Hmm. It's a less juicy target. This has a lot of gold. Um, yeah, it has some gold here. And I don't have a lot of troops. I have to go after them with just these troops and these troops and these troops. Because if you look at the revolt risk screen, I don't believe I have any revolt risk anywhere over here. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. Oh, here I do, because I haven't cored them yet, but... Um... <sighs> what to do? Should I go after them? I need all these troops down here in order to... Uh, prevent these revolts, so I'd have to do it with less troops. I could pretty easily do it with less troops. Um, yeah, I should. I should. <coughs> not, not, not any good reason I can see not to do that. So let's go ahead and pick up these troops and go after the Iroquois too. And the reason I yeah, okay, they left the coalition against us right as we're about to declare on them. Not your best, uh, not your best move there, buddy. I'm gonna put this guy here, um, cause that's probably that's probably where I'll need to transport most. I just accidentally built him <coughs> <coughs> quite a while ago.
I, I'd really rather not be stuck to Shawnee, because it's going to take me a long time to... <laughs> Take me a long time to get to 190, because I can't make a royal marriage. Um, I can't proclaim a guarantee. I could break facilitation and then declare on them again. Uh, I can always send them a gift. But it's going to take a while. Okay, if that's going to be the way they are, I think I'm going to wait them here. I do believe this probably has... This is 29, this is 19. Yeah, this has higher supply limit. Coastal intrinsically has high supply limit. Um, I, I, I think. That might just be Crusader Kings too. Because we see a lot of territory down here, some really good stuff a little bit further south. <coughs> <coughs> so the next couple colonies are all going to be taking the coast to keep um, to keep Portugal from doing it. In fact, I could recall from there, but no, I'm just gonna let it, I'm just gonna let it go. As long as I don't see Portugal really near down here, they have to turn this corner, I mean, they, they could be over here, there's nothing stopping them. What? Whoa, that's a huge bailout. What is that, like, five times my yearly income or something ridiculous? of the bank to lend to slightly less reliable people. <laughs> if, uh, if you live in the United States right now, we've been going through a few renditions or iterations of something called quantitative easing, and it was a really great idea. Um, it, I mean, the, the stock market hit that we had in 2009 mm, was as bad as the Great Depression, and what the people felt in the United States was nowhere near that bad. And it was a lot, in, a lot of it was due to quantitative easing, but now the stock market is super high, the bond market is pricing really low. Uh, people are predicting negative growth for the next 10 years. That's what the bond pricing currently says, and it's because Quantitative easing just pumps so much money into the economy, we know, we know that there's going to have to be a backlash for that. Um, in this game, the backlash is not so big. It is a little bit of administrative power. Yeah, tasty. Um, that's a pretty big loan I have. <laughs> Oh wow, Portugal is right over here. Oh man, that's brutal. I feel so stupid. That I didn't come over here a little earlier. I might have to go to war with Portugal. I don't know for sure. Um, we should be about ready to go to war over here. But I should be able to send this diplomat to go do something. Oh, France is back to not being mad, mad at us. Austria is not actually friendly with us anymore. They, they wouldn't make a royal marriage with us if we didn't have one. Denmark is still a good ally. They're allied with Spain, though, which is kind of a mess. Although it will probably keep them from going to war with us if... What? We can see... Oh, okay. So we can see everything the Ottomans can see? What's up with that? O-M-G? <laughs> Everybody check this out. Byzantium is still around and still has core. Oh no. It's, it's still around. Just Byzantium is still around. <laughs> <coughs> that is so weird. Um, how weird is that? 
And they've lost all of their... They've lost all their cores. Hmm. Pretty powerful Ottoman, though. Mm, excuse me, pretty powerful Ottoman. Who to improve relationships with? I guess at this point it's just France. Um, I have no problem improving relationships with France. So in 160 days, which is a while, we can declare war with the Iroquois. And we're not having to fight for this guy? I'm so fine with that. Yeah, this is what I couldn't understand. He's leading French troops, right? And I could delete all these French troops. I could just ban this entire stack of French troops if I felt like it. We have the same ruler, but we're not in a personal union. We have the same heir, but we're not in personal union. I don't even know. We're not. We're not a lot. We're not allies. We're not in personal union. We have the same ruler. It's. I just don't get it. Um. Yeah. Our armies are fully reinforced. I'm gonna start building back up some military strength, starting with over here, because these these 13 are not going to be enough to handle all of the revolts up there. I'm going to need a little bit more. And eventually, I'll disband some of the massive... <laughs> wow, the interest is so huge on this. Okay, so. So these ships should have been built. Um, we're gonna protect trade in. Wow. Wow. We just did like little tiny province number. They have Peru. Oh, actually, they have a lot more than that. So we're gonna have to fight for Peru if we want it. Pretty obviously, we're not gonna fight for Peru. Um, there's only one place it can send trade to. So we don't need to worry about directing trade. Probably not going to collect trade from here. California, also only one place to collect trade. Um, but, but anyway. We need to send one to Peru. One to Panama. No, not Panama. Oh, we need one in Panama on this side, too. We can't protect trade here because we have yet to see there. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to build a ship up here, then. Mexico. Okay, so we'll we'll get rid of those tax uh, those tax hits. Hopefully, they understand what I mean. If this one's protecting Peru, hopefully, yeah, hopefully it understands that I want it to stay on this side of the world. No, nope. no, it doesn't seem to understand. Oh no, it did. It turned back. Okay. Yeah, they've already turned the corner. Looks like they may have some more to do down here, and that may be where they're focusing. And they still have some over here, too. Were any of these any profitable? Yeah, they weren't bad. Um, they weren't bad. Some of these are actually quite good. For example, that one is a six. 
So just to get a hold of it, I'm, I'm gonna go here and here. We can now head to war. Okay. Our allies are not interested in this war. I'm not interested in bringing our allies into this war. You can run. I'll give you that. But I don't think you can hide. Um, this should be a good place to take a little break, and I'll be right back, uh, but you can be back whenever you join me.